In 1994, Playmate Toys released a line of toys called Skeleton Warriors. A bunch of people from that company wanted to make a game to go with the toys and the cartoon, and thus Neversoft was born. As they grew, they moved to Woodland Hills, California. After giving up on the Sega Genesis version, they went to work on the Sega Saturn. You are approaching Saturn. Wow. And eventually the PlayStation 1. where Skeleton Warriors would finally release in 1996. They would attempt to develop a few more games, but each were canceled. Right before they ran out of money, they met with Activision to redevelop Apocalypse. Activision really liked the engine for this game, and eventually they signed on a prototype skateboarding game based on Top Skater. An arcade game where you stand on a board and tilt back and forth going down a hill. I'm sure they won't reuse that in the future. Eventually, they realized the best part of the game was at the bottom where you essentially had freedom to do any trick you want. They were able to intrigue skateboarder Tony Hawk, who would help them a lot during the development of the game. Also in the buildup, Tony Hawk would land the very first 900 live on the X Games with a bunch of people chanting his name. Skateboarding was as popular as it has ever been, but everything was about to be even bigger. September 29th, 1999, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater would release. The expectations were to be for skaters. The reality was the highest selling game in November and the third most selling game in 2000. It wasn't just a hit, it was a must have game at the time. Well, how well has it hold up? Well, let's take a look at the beginning of a legendary franchise. Right from the start, we get the companies that made the game. Now, there's nothing notable here yet, but I will say, keep an eye on things later. We get a skating montage to hype us up and hype us up it does. We see all the skaters in the game with police truck by the dead Kennedys as the song. We get thrown right into the main menu. We have a career mode, two player mode, single session, free skate, options, and videos and some pretty great background main menu music that is there to keep your head bump. Now, most levels are locked until you play them in career mode. So let's just get right into career mode. First thing you do is pick your skater. Every skater here starts with their own stats and specials, but by the end of it, the stats will probably be the same. Each skater does have their own decks and that is actually how you upgrade your stats. Bit of an interesting choice there. You can also change your truck tightness to turn faster or slower. And a lot of these specials with these skaters are also pretty similar. I swear about six of the 10 skaters here have a backflip as a special. Pretty sure most people pick either Tony Hawk or Chad Muska here. Obviously people are going to pick the cover boy over anyone else. He also has the 900 in his moveset, which is by far the coolest move in this game. As for Chad Muska, he looks cool. Really the only reason? This dude personifies the late 90s and early 2000s. You load up Warehouse, the only one of the nine levels you get to start off with. You load up to see your objectives. You might not know what all this means yet. So you press X to determine to learn and... This is glorious. The controls are so easy to pick up here. X is Ollie, triangle is a grind, square does flip tricks, circle does grabs. The sound effects are so perfect, changing on the texture of what you're skating on, making noise when you do a special trick, which is basically like a Mortal Kombat like combination. And my God, the soundtrack. It truly is the glue that keeps everything together here. This game's soundtrack is essentially what you would hear if you were to go through a skater CD collection, it fits everything so well. This series introduced the world to punk, ska, maybe some metal, maybe some hip hop, you name it. It manages to both be underground and mainstream at the same time. And that is sort of what the gameplay feels like as well. 
the whole game gives off an attitude of i'm great i know i'm great i don't care if you don't like skating i'm gonna make you love it and by the time you got yourself composed the two minute timer goes off and you see how many tapes you collected tapes are the game's objectives in each level and you can attempt to do these over and over again you got five tapes three of which are based on score one fight a secret area within the level and one based on a platform and challenge it's a pretty good system and it's pretty fun to go around for two minutes trying to collect every single tape that you can however every once in a while the game will change things up a little bit and throw in a competition level in an attempt to sort of replicate what the x games is competition levels are well just that a competition you got one minute to have a good run no goals no anything just get a high score and hope the judges like you enough just make sure you don't fall because that will hurt your score this is probably my favorite thing in the game although i do feel like they are pretty easy once you get a good handle on the game you're probably going to do two or three heats and win the gold making it so you just skip the last one while this game is great it definitely feels like it could be more half pipes are sort of redundant because all the points are going to be found doing grind and alling from one rail to the next which not only increases your score but also your combo multiplier there are no manuals in this game which you think would be in here as people usually try that the first time they get on the skateboard and break their tailbone your playability is in a strange place here on one hand you can play through each skater's career mode unlock your secret movie and even a secret character named officer dick however every character here plays more or less the same I mean you're pretty much just doing the same thing over and over again with each and every skater it's cool seeing the new decks but it's going to get really repetitive after a while unless you just really want to get all the skater movies i suggest doing it once maybe twice and then just kind of messing around in session skate or free skate session skate gives you two minutes to get a high score and free skate opens the levels to do whatever you want with them now if you got a friend you can do a two-player mode but i'm not sure how many people still have two playstation one controllers laying around or playstation ones in general the reason anyone would ever keep coming back to this game nowadays is probably nostalgia but back in the day it was the amazing and responsive control system mixed with the amazing levels minus the downhill jam i've actually already ranked the levels in a separate video a while back feel free to check that out a solid very first entry into the series i give tony x pro skater 1 in 8.3 out of 10. This game set the foundation for not only the future of the series, the future of skateboarding, it really rose the popularity of skateboarding really by itself, but it just changed everything in the video game world. Overnight, Tony Hawk was a household name, and pretty soon, a bunch of other companies would start putting licensed music in their games. And yes, there's some shortcomings, especially because this game is very street skating focused when the guy in the cover is a vert skater, but that's okay because this game's control system is so good if you haven't played this game play the remaster that just came out uh, not too long ago but if you haven't played that game or don't have a chance to play that game then starting here really isn't a bad thing to do thank you for watching like the video if you haven't already subscribe for more content comment down below and check the description for links such as the discord